All right, so lessons three and four are this. Begin sharing, start selling, and make it easy to access. And, and this is really more of the mind shifts. Now, let me explain how this all developed. Uh, in lessons one and two, I talked to you about this one book that I wrote that had this sub point that was about the compensation plan. And so I received a lot of questions about that. And then I decided to actually take my own advice. If I'm going to grow this business, what I need to do is I need to learn how you get paid, what you get paid for. And so that small idea, and, and don't miss the fact that it was a small idea. It was just a few paragraphs in a 200 page book. It really was in the first book and it becomes a big idea to create a second book and it continues. So uh, what I did is I took my own advice to start researching the compensation plan for that organization and I just start fleshing it out. And all right, well, it seems like you get paid to do this. And so that means in order to get paid, you need to do that. Uh, it seems like this is a payment. So you need to do this in order to get that payment. So eventually develop that out. And that became another 200 page book that I was then able to sell to publishers um, not sell off the rights, but sell my book as well as put that for sale on my website. Um, now, here's what happened to that. So small idea grows into a big thing. Now, it was about the comp plan is how you never start a job without clarifying how you get paid, which is, again, relevant to this conversation here. Okay, You always want to know how do you get paid. Even that was true in that business. That's true here with what you're doing online and with your books and podcasts and blogs and coaching and courses and everything we're going to discuss is what do you do to get paid? What's the payment schedule? And it's completely relevant. So here's what happened. That book's circulating around, and then I receive a phone call from a team member that's in our organization. And that team member that lives about two hours from where we live says, hey, look, our organization is growing. And so what we want to know is, can you come teach us? Will you come show us what we need to do to get paid? Now, at that time, I had been to multiple business training workshops. And when I showed up, no disrespect intended at all, they would be very random. So you would have three to four people that would get up there and give a presentation. And they're all going to they kind of subdivide it. Like you're talking about this. You're talking about that. You're talking about this, another person talking about this. And there was no uniformity in all of it. So sometimes, you know, some of the people would show up with PowerPoint presentations. They'd, they'd be like well polished. Other people, no PowerPoint, but they might have slides, uh, you know, kind of sketched out or an outline that they're passing out notes. Other people had a well orchestrated outline, but not really handing out anything, not really showing anything on the screen. And then you would have other people that would show up, and it was almost as if, they were oblivious to the fact that they were scheduled to give a presentation. And so I thought, well, I don't want to fall into any of that if I'm the one that's creating all of the content and I've got three hours to talk about this compensation plan and how you do it, I'm going to create something that's replicatable. And so, yes, I said, uh, because their success in that type of business is my success. So I get paid when I make them successful. And so we created a system that we could replicate the training. So what I started doing was creating, uh, using the outline from my book to teach a workshop. So I made the outline, okay, here's the essentials. Out of, out of all that book, here's the essentials, made an outline. All right, then I turned that outline into slides, and turned those slides into a workbook, go up there, the training goes well, um, it goes through a few upgrades. The first. Uh, eventually I recorded it on video, but the, the first time I went up there, I had this workbook. It was about a hundred pages long. I'd gone to the local UPS store. Uh, I, I printed off a copy, uh, you know, it had the blanks, uh, just like the book that you guys have here. And people could write their answers in when I had a slide, just like this. This is exactly what they were doing. And that first time uh, I recorded it, audio, didn't have video, uh, so that people that did not attend the training, there were probably 30 or 40 of us there that night people who did not attend or they couldn't make it or one spouse came but the other one couldn't, uh, they could go back with the workbook and they could listen to a very rough, very rudimentary audio recording, but they could still go through it. Like it was still replicatable. And then even better than that is other people who are business leaders, they could take the same material, they could teach people using the same book. And so they didn't have to worry about like those other instances where somebody shows up with slides and then somebody shows up with an outline and somebody shows up with something that they're not going to pass anything out, but it's, people can follow and take notes and somebody else shows up not knowing anything. But it was a very much a usable tool they could take. Now, after a few iterations of that, you know, catching the typos, um, 
taking out things that were confusing, making things clearer, putting in some more pictures and graphics, I decided I'm gonna record this and I videoed it again. Okay, now in this process of videoing it and then selling it, um, and uh, we sold it on our website, we sold it at events where I was speaking. You know, sometimes we'd sell this it was DVD, <laughs> that'll take you back uh, seven years. Um, because you think all the MP3s and MP4s have just kind of come online in the last six to seven years. So doing that, uh, we would make a hundred bucks or so each time we sold it. I learned here, again, the process of this, is I could sell something I did once, I could sell it many times over. Okay, so that's kind of an awkward sentence, how it's, kind of, okay, I did it once, but I sold it multiple times. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, I, I did it once, I recorded it once, I created the course once. I did the work of making the workbook once. I did the work of making all my slides once. Recorded the video once. Now, by once, like understand that once means lots of edits and lots of imperfections and the process of refining this once is a lot of work. But the once, once I had it, I could sell that video set. It might be $100. I could sell it to anybody who wanted to buy it. So did the work, could sell it to you for $100, you for $100, you for $100, could put it on sale for you for 50 bucks, could sell it to them for $100, them for $100, could continue selling and reselling it over and over. In fact, one thing that I did was when I recorded this, I remember uh, the first time I recorded it professionally, I eventually re-recorded it about two years after that first iteration, is I recorded it on video and people paid to attend a uh, three hour workshop, they paid 30 to 50 bucks. Um, they attended, they got a workbook that cost me at that point, two to $3. So I'm making money on that end. And then the videos that I'm recording, I told everybody, hey, we're gonna sell these. Uh, we allowed some of those people to pre-purchase those. And of course we kept selling those after that event. Uh, and then I had a book table at the back of the event uh, where I'm recording with hundred people in the room and I sold my other two books uh, on the book table. So I make the money from the tickets, I make the money from the books that I've already written once, um, I'm recording this, people are paying to attend, and then I'm gonna sell the recording. And so from this one event, it ends up being about a $10,000 ticket uh, from what really cost everybody 30 to 40, 50 dollars to attend. Again, doing something once, and you figure out you could sell it multiple times other. Here's, here's the other thing that I learned during that whole process, is having a book, okay, again, remember, I stumbled into it accidentally. I'm on that trip to Hawaii, I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna write a book. Having a book almost instantly builds credibility and authority. Now, there are a lot of bad books out there. There are a lot of books out there that really you think, well, man, this is random, they don't really say anything. But the fact that they have a book, like it instantly makes you go, oh, they're an author. They got something important to say. I should probably listen to what they have to say. So it almost kind of opens the door in other ways to where people begin taking you seriously if you have a book. Uh, here's something else I learned is having a course and a book, uh, that boosts the authority and credibility even farther. So people assume that if you got a book, like you've got a certain level of expertise, they assume if you've taken that book and you put it on video, Right or wrong, okay, whether or not you do have any expertise is yet to be seen, but it does open the door. Here's one of the events that uh, we were at. That's me like teaching, not recording this one. It's me way in the back. It's a room full of people that showed up just because I had a book and I had a course. And so now they're going to show up to a live event, not recording any of this. They're going to show up to a live event just because I had a book and a course. And they're going to listen to what I have to say because for no other reason, I have a book and I have a course. Now, if I don't deliver, they're gonna walk out the door and they're never gonna come back. But if I do deliver, again, that opened up the door. Why? Just because I had a book and I, and I had a course. Uh, here's something else I learned. Um, you also have the content at that point that you can share and reshare in numerous other ways. So all of that content from those books, that started becoming everything that I needed for blog posts, that started becoming everything that I needed for email funnels, that started becoming everything I needed even for podcasting um, because I'd already done the heavy lifting of creating the content on the front end. And once I had that, got the credibility because I have a book, got more credibility because I have a course. Oh, now all of a sudden I can share this through other venues. And that's one of the things that we'll talk about as we start discussing the media. Um, here was another request is uh, 
at one point after having this course, okay, so, and this kind of builds on this, sharing and resharing. At some point, uh, one Sunday, I actually received a phone call. A friend of mine was driving home from church with his wife and she called. They were discussing like how to grow their business. And he suggested, he was like, well, call Andy. Like, like he's got all this stuff, like he knows it. Uh, and it was a guy that I was partnered with doing some other events for men with. And so they call and she says, hey, um, can you do an online business boot camp uh, with us? Again, to teach people how to grow that business. Now, why do they call? Because I had a book, I had a course, and I had some credibility because I had done some live events. And so instantly, like on the phone, you know, she tells me, hey, it's going to be seven weeks. What I'm thinking is you can you know, get on there and record it, like talk about the compensation plan. I'm going to teach people all the motivational stuff, but I want you to teach the nuts and bolts of it. Take as long as you need. It's going to be in a Facebook group. And so pre-record it. And then once a week, we'll just upload the video and then we'll share it. And then as we're talking, she says, and by the way, um, you know, make a bundle of all of your books and things, because I'll encourage people that are in that group to buy your stuff and say, hey, this will be helpful supplemental in addition to the boot camp." So I agreed. I told him, yeah, this is a friend. I agree. And then I said, um, yes, I'll just figure out how to do it after I agree. So it was a quick yes. And then it was like, okay, what did I just agree to? Now I got to figure out how to do this. But it wasn't hard because again, I already had the content. I'd already done the heavy lifting. Once you have your message, you can share and reshare that message through different formats over and over again and again. So here's how I did it. This is what I chose to do is um, I sat down in my living room at my house on the floor in front of the fireplace because it was brick. I didn't have a fancy studio. And I opened up all the windows. So I had to do this in the morning so that the sun would not be coming through the windows and then put this bad reflection on me. Did it in the morning so I had natural light. That provided the light. Again, I'm literally sitting down on the floor in front of a brick fireplace. It looks like I'm in a loft apartment or some sort of studio. I'm literally sitting with my legs sprawled out in front of me and I put my iPhone up on a little stand and I would just talk to the camera. And anytime I got to a place where I messed up, I would just pause, I'd collect myself, go, okay, let me, sometimes all the nuances of how you get paid, right? With business structure, I would just pause, think through it, say the sentence out loud a few times and go, okay, keep on going, got it. And go walk through it. So I'm laying down tracks that are maybe 20 minutes that I know I'm gonna edit down to about 15 minutes just looking at the camera. And then I came back after I recorded. I had that one because I already written the book. In fact, I've got my book sitting right there in front of me going, okay, let's sketch these outlines of you know, where I'm gonna go with the talk, but it's all just done unscripted. If a picture's worth a thousand words and seeing is believing, here's what I decided to do was I'm gonna make all these graphics um, by taking them from the business workshop and the business book that I've already done, I'm gonna import them in here. I'm gonna change the background and change the colors. I'm gonna reuse what I already have, change the fonts to where it looks like it's a completely new thing, but it's the exact same stuff. And I learned that people could see it while I'm explaining it. And sometimes just kind of filling in the details, you know, building out the charts kind of in real time. If they can see it visually and they can see it by telling a story, then in some sense, it's gonna help build out the argument. Here's what else I want you to see. And this is gonna be really important as we build through all of these other uh, parts of the media. I used free technology to do this out of the box. So to be very clear, I shot this on an iPhone. Uh, I could not use the professional recordings that I had because those were fill in the blank workbooks. When people were, and I, and I would have repurposed it, but when people are in a Facebook group, they're not sitting around with the workbook going on. Uh, also, because the iPhone will shoot, at the time they wouldn't shoot in 4K, now they will. Um, but because the uh, iPhone does reasonably well, I could just you know, take it, uh, drop the footage into iMovie, which is free. Uh, it's out of the box. I could use Keynote, which is free, out of the box, one at Apple. Uh, and then I could edit everything together, free, free, free technology. Again, I made available the tools that I had right outside of the box. Okay, it's a mistake to think that you've got to have like a certain degree of software or a high level of training or some kind of expertise. Just get started 
and you can continue developing this stuff as you go. You're gonna get better at it, you're gonna develop your skills, uh, you just continue moving forward with it. Don't wait for the technology to catch up with where you want it to be, um, just, just get started. A, a book that was written on a typewriter you know, 50, 60 years ago is just as valid as a book that's written on a computer today. Uh, the same works true with a lot of the technology that you'll use for video. Uh, here's what I did. At the conclusion of the boot camp, I decided that I would bundle and sell the videos. Now I had seven of them. I shot them all in two sittings. So I did not sit around and shoot a video, upload that the week, sit around, shoot another one, upload it. I shot three one day and then I edited them and then a couple weeks later I shot four more and then I had it and it was all together. Okay, at the conclusion of the boot camp, so I'm uploading these, I've got them all complete before the boot camp even starts. At the conclusion of the boot camp, I decided I'm gonna bundle all these that I created for a group for free and now I'm gonna sell these. So uh, the first thing I did is I offered them free to everyone that was in the Facebook group. There were probably a thousand people in that group and I remember going on and the language was really sim simple. You know, I posted one week, just like I did every other week, except for instead of posting a video this time, I just posted and said, hey, I've got these videos. I put them on my website. Uh, I'm not gonna sell them to you all because you were in this group and you've been going through this. We've been doing this together for seven weeks. Thank you. Besides, these people had been buying my books. They had been referring other people to buy my books. So my gift to you, you can grab all these videos here on my website. Uh, what you need to do is you need to sign up for them though. Uh, so just enter in your email address and your name and then it will deliver them to you absolutely free. But you do need to take advantage of it by the end of the week, by Friday, because at that point I'm gonna sell them. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna sell them for, but I do want you guys to have them for free. That was it. Wasn't really a sales pitch. I didn't honestly even know what I was gonna do with them. I did know I was gonna sell them at some point. Um, 500 people, I had this little notification where anytime anybody registered, it would like hit my email box. Hey, somebody registered. Five, it was like 507. So not like high 500s, like low 500. 507 ish people registered for free access. Now I had their contact info and I could market to them. Now let me say right here a big PS footnote. I didn't market to them. I didn't know like what that even meant. I just knew like I had their contact info, had no clue what to do was the next step. Uh, but this would be valuable information where you can learn from my mistake of not following up with those 500 plus people. Here's what happened the next day. Uh, a few dozen people, they missed the deadline and they still paid $47 to access what was still free in the Facebook group. So I, I didn't scrub them from the Facebook group. It was not my Facebook group. Somebody had asked me a favor would I do this for them? I agreed to do it. Um, you know, they were gonna help me sell my books. They did, they followed through on that. But people still paid for what was free in the group. And so I remember thinking through that, I'm like, why in the world would these people, and like only one or two people complained, well, I missed the deadline, I didn't, you know. Just, most people were very gracious about it. They were thrilled to pay me $47. They could have gotten it free the day before. I'm like, why? And they could still get it free in the Facebook group. I'm like, why would you pay for something you could get for free? Here's what somebody explained. All these Facebook posts, even in a group, they exist on a timeline. And so like when you're scrolling, it's like just this long feed. Well, the first video was seven weeks of feed ago in that group. And the second video was six weeks ago of feed in that group. And you had all these other comments and all these other posts that people had made and all these other training things. And so the more time that elapsed between the video they wanted and where we were that day, like every day, that timeline is just filling out and those videos are disappearing. So it's really not convenient to go get those videos. So that's why they paid me for free. So here were the next two lessons I learned about amplifying your message. This is lessons three and four, just as you're keeping up. Lesson number three, don't wait until you have the perfect tools or tech. Somebody calls you to shoot the videos for a Facebook group, okay? I had a professional version, but I couldn't use it. I learned, don't wait for the perfect tools or tech, just begin now, use what you've got. Over time, you can continue developing out that and make better tools, make better technology, but just start where you are. Here's the second thing I learned, and this is gonna be really important when we start talking about marketing your message. This is another mind shift, is both of those are mind shifts. People will pay you for convenience. 
So the fact that you have something that's a relevant message and you make it easy for them to access, they will pay you for that convenience. That's lessons three and four. That's two more mind shifts that you need to make as you amplify your message.